We are recording so uh, some of the stuff that we have done before I'm just going to write them in here such that this recording will show that from where we are and where we are continuing. We discussed the uh, cash flow and cash flow analysis. We discussed the interest rate and the compounding and then we looked at uh, moving the transactions um, over the periods of cash flow, finding the present worth, finding the future worth based on different options. The first options that we looked at it was uh, moving a single payment, a single transaction to the future or to the present. So this was, for example, something that we did. If we had $100 and we wanted to find its equivalent in year five, which means this is what we were trying to do. We were trying to find an equivalent If we wanted to have that, knowing the compounding, knowing the compounding and the interest rate, we use the formula. We discuss the formula, we develop the formula, and that formula was assuming that this value is a P and this equivalent value is F. We showed that using a formula of P and F and F and P using a formula such as this will provide you this movement. In this case we are taking a present worth to the future. So this is the formula that we are going to be using. In this case, the, the formula was I to the N. So if I had $100 and I wanted to find its equivalent at the year five, I would start counting the years from here to here. That's one, two, three, four and five. So at the end of year five this value will be compounded one, two, three and four. So this F value at the end of year five would be one hundred dollar ton one plus um, whatever the interest rate is. Let's assume that the interest rate uh, is eight percent. So this will be uh, plus 0 0.08 to the 4. And that would provide you an equivalent at the end of year 5. So the periods will be counted from here. This will be assumed to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, the number of periods. And everything occurs at the end of each period. The reverse of this action uses the same formula, but it's reciprocal of that formula. In this case, in this case, it would be 1 plus i to the minus n. So if I had, for example, if I had $100 in here and I wanted to find, let's say, its, its value, its equivalent value at year zero, which this is what I wanted to find. I will be using this formula. In this case, it would be P equal 100 times 1 plus 0 0.08 to the power of 
minus 5. Because there are 5 periods in here. And that was a very simple case. Then we introduced the notion of these values, these specific values, being called a specific factors. There are specific factors and these specific factors notation-wise have three elements in them. The middle element is I, the last element is the number of periods N, and the first element defines what is actually, identifies what is actually you're trying to find. In this case, I want to find the present value of a future value. So it would be P given F. If I am given F and I want to find its present value, this is how the factor is noted and the notation is there. In this case, that, so this is this factor and the reciprocal of this factor, the reciprocal of that factor, which is this factor, is the reciprocal of the same thing. So I would have F given P, I, and N. Because these values are, because these values are fixed, there are tables at the end of each one of these uh, engineering economy books that will give you those. This is an example of a, and you all have these things and you are required to bring with yourself to the class. This is an example of a table. On this table you can actually see that each table is designed for a specific value of interest rate and at the on each column there are different factors and for each year for each year these factors are calculated it's just they put I in here and for different ends they wrote those numbers in here under a column for example under a column which says F given PI and an N which is probably that first column okay so, so these are essentially the basic elements. Now if I have three different payments, well, each one of them one by one and then you add them up. If they are all above the cash flow line, they are all positive, they are represented as positive values. They are like income that you have, profit that you get, sales value that you get. And if uh, they are downward, if the arrows are downward, then they represent the payments that you pay, maintenance, rent, uh, salary that the wages that you give to the uh, labor that is performing the work and and so on or the machinery that you buy and then you, you can use them with that negative value so you subtract them actually when you do so if you have two three in here and two three in here then you can bring one by one to either if it is present worth you can bring it here or if it is future worth you can take it to the end of that line or wherever they identify for you. The terms present and future doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be as year zero or the year n. They identify where that present or future is. So they may ask you find the equivalent of these cash flow at year 10. Well, anything before 10 needs to be brought to the year 10, which is a future 
value for with respect to that and anything that is after year 10 will need to bring back to brought back to year 10 which in this case is a present term so these are very uh, standard and simple stuff uh, we showed you how to develop this simple formula and and these two actually for the rest of the factors we are not going to actually do that but the process is the same which means if we are talking about a simple annuity series which means equal payments every year to develop the formula is to bring one by one to the present worth add them up and see how you can come up with a uh, expansion of the series and or uh, reduction of that series into one big formula. We are going to write the formula because there are two ways to do these calculations. One using the formula and second using the tables. So you can directly put the numbers inside the formula and get an answer or you can go to the table and the num that number is calculated written in the table you can use that number. The next one that we uh, discussed was the equal amount of payments over the years. Again remember all these calculations are based on end of year payments and we discussed why end of year uh, is something that we will uh, consider because usually they, uh, for the purposes of the tax, tax at the end of the year you calculate all the income, you calculate all the expenses and so on and you, then you present it as a uh, end of year. Um, as you will see so, uh, in, in later lectures, uh, year is not the only period that we discuss. Sometimes we discuss weeks, sometimes we discuss month, bi-weekly, seasonally, or whatever it is. Uh, those of you who may have uh, individual businesses, you know that tax collectors ask you to pay taxes, to pay your taxes at the end of three months or six months and so on. Anyway, the next series that we looked at were the annuity series. An example of an annuity series is something like this that uh, from year one to year three to year ten um, you're paying equal amounts. So this is really like that. This is really like that but the presentation of it is in like that box and one number in here will identify the whole payment so the box represents how much you are uh, paying at the end of each year in this case all is positive the need for this again is just like those two that we discuss present worth and and future worth those are the main options that we have for analysis however we also discuss the third one which makes pretty sense in here and even in the first one and that is converting a series of payments different formats into a payment series like that and on a good example of it is when you buy a, a car and finance it they'll ask you to pay at the end of each period equal amount of payment at the end of each period until an equivalent of the payment the original payment is done so, so in this case, and these values, we, we represent them with A. In this case, we are looking for, given an A value, 
what is the present worth of a series of payments or what is the future worth of a series of payments. In here the idea is what is the equivalent of this payments one year ahead of that of that set of payments. In this case in this case in the second case the idea is what is the equivalent of this right in here at the year 10. Those were the ones that we discussed. So now so far we have looked at converting a future value to a present worth uh, P given F. We have looked at a present value into a future value that's F given P. We also have the same thing for annuities which says what is an equivalent series of equal payments over a period if you have its present worth. So, so in this case what is A given P? Or a future value into into this. What is the equivalent amount of payments that make up a future value? This example is like you buying a car. This example is like pension. You pay every month equal amount and at the end of 20 years you have a specific amount set that you can withdraw. These are the cases that you will deal with. So this type of this type of uh, calculations are very simple to perform. Very simple to perform. What makes it a little bit harder is that when they don't look like a standard form. The standard form of these series is zero here, one here, and n here. Okay. Standard form. You just put them in the formula and you get the value. But it becomes just a little, just a notch harder when when these things do not occur on specific years. If the series for example is like that and you want to find its equivalent in another year other than the year just before. If I wanted to just find it just the year before starting that year then I can directly use the formula. But if it is like that, I have to do it in two, two steps. You have to combine it into two steps. First, you have to move this to a year before, just in here, year two, which will make it now like a year two payment and if you want the present worth of it in year two, then you will be using a formula like this. Or if you want to find its future value, you will be doing pretty much the same thing. 
which means you will be moving this value to that year, you will find an equivalent of that box in the year 10, which will convert this into a payment at year 10, and if you want to move it to year 12, then you have to do a second step to convert, to move this to year 12. In this case, an A became an F. Same F is now act like a P and will go to another F at this point. So it's, it's how you deal with these uh, specific designs of the payments that you get over the years. Again, three important things. First, there is a compounding. If there was no compounding, the whole thing will be different. If it was simple interest, the whole thing will be different. There is a compounding. Then, the second important thing is that it's the same compounding over the years. It's not changing. If the compounding changes from like for example annual compounding to monthly compounding, the whole thing changes. And the third thing is that the periods are all the same. They are annual. So this payment is at the end of first year, this payment at the end of second year, third year, and so on up to the rest of them. These we have discussed and we have seen a couple of problems that deal with these two cases. And in each one of them, in each one of the assignment problems that you have seen, you have seen these cases. Now we are introducing a different type of series which is called the arithmetic series. Arithmetic series of payments are the type of payments that at the end of each period the last payment increases by a set value. So if at the end of first year you're paying $100 and the set value is $25, at the end of second year you are going to pay $100 plus $25. At the end of the next year you will be paying $125 plus $25. At the end of next one you will be paying $100 50 plus 25 and so on. That set value is called G. The gradient series. The series would look like this and this is the standard form of the series. Starting at year 1 through year N 1 2, 3, 4, and so on. The first payment, that's the first payment, and then the second payment goes a little bit larger. What is that difference? What is that difference? That difference is G. The next one will be this. What is that difference? Is G. What is that difference? Is G. Is G value. What is this whole difference? Is 2G. So it's 1G, 2G, Next one will be same thing. This is a G value, 
That's the that $25 example that I made. That's another G value. That's another G value. So first one is this value, which we call it A, because remember they are all the same type of payments. The first one is going to be G. The next one is going to be 2G. Next one is going to be 3G. When it gets here, it's going to be what? Is that year 4 was 4G? It's N minus 1G. Why? Because it is, the G is started at year 2. So it's A plus 0G, A plus 1G, A plus 2G, A plus 3G, and so on. And in here, if N is 10, this is A plus 9G. This series is represented pictorially with this, with an A, and this, and that. So when you see this, they are talking about an arithmetic series. So it's, it's called, this is called arithmetic gradient series. So arithmetic gradient series is talking about a series which would look like that. Again, tables have all these uh, for you and I will write some of the formulas for you as well. The things that you usually see is what is the equivalent present worth of these series? Which means what is it its equivalent at this year? One year be before it starts. In this case P is having two sets. One dealing with this payment, one dealing with this payment, which is an annuity payment, plus this rectangular shape type payments. So it's usually these values are these these values are presented with the P a given certain G. P given a certain G is only talking about that part of it. There should be something which is talking about this part of it too. So when we write the formula, when we, when we do the calculation, you have to make sure that you have both parts included in it. There's also, we'll write, we'll do examples. Uh, but we will write one big formula for both. So, and the other one is F. How do you convert this into one payment at this year? And, and again, in, in this case, we will be using F given G. Again, don't forget, this is only talking about the G part of it, which is this triangular part of it. This is separate because there is no A in here. Okay. This is separate. Or we can have the A value. How do you convert this whole thing, this whole thing, into a set of equal payments every year? There's this part, and when you break this part into annual payments, it probably will be something like this. And we are going to do now a number of examples to hopefully see how it is working. Sometimes you are given something that only one of the numbers doesn't match. For example, I remember uh, one of the quiz questions last time 
was something like this. That this one was here and it could go up to here with just using one formula. But one of these payments in here didn't really go up to here. It went up to here. Okay? Which meant it broke the the pattern. The simple the simple way of fixing this is take it up there and see how much did you add? Hundred dollar, fifty dollar, this much? Okay. Missing value. But then you have changed the cash flow. To make it equal, what can you do? Put that missing value in here. It's the same thing. I added and I subtracted. But that helped this to become just one series. Instead of me dealing with two separate series. Okay? Little things. So we will be doing a couple of examples to see how these things are done. Remember I told you that you need to look at your textbook. There are ample examples of these things in your textbook. Sometimes, sometimes what you have is examples that shows these things above here. Sometimes they show them below here. Sometimes they are a standard form, sometimes they are not a standard form and so on. So how do you how do you work out this thing? How do you find the present worth of this? It's similar to to that one, or similar to this one, except that the numbers are negative. Okay. What if what if the series is like this? What is the difference in here? What is the difference? The values are decreasing, so what is the difference? Yes. But what would, the, what would be the difference in the formula? The difference in the formula is that G in here is negative. In this case, G is negative. Okay. What about a case like this? What about a case like, like this? The value, this value, that's A value. This is the A value. This is not the A value. This is the A value. A value is positive, but G is negative. In this case, A value is negative, negative but the G is positive. What about a case like this? It are two separate series. In this series, A is positive, positive. G is negative. negative. What about this one? G is still negative. G is still negative. What about A? A is negative. What is A in here? A doesn't exist. A is zero. A is zero. It's only G in here. Is A zero because it crosses? It doesn't have one of these things at the start of it. Okay. 
what about a series like this? What about a series like this? And let's say this is year 10, whatever. This is two different. This is two different series. It's not one series. It's two different series. What is the first series? Well, the first series just has a, a G. G is increasing. A is zero, right? A is zero for this series. A is zero. And G is increasing. For this series, A is positive, G is negative. Okay. However, it has one additional quiz type catch in it. What is that catch? What is the first series? What is the first series? Oh, we can say that the first series is this. What is the second series? Is this the first, this is the first series? What is the second series? Is the second series this? You cannot count one of them twice. You can always do that. Okay, but you cannot count one of them twice. So how would you, you will start the, the series at 11? You will cut that and you can break them into this. This is your 11. Okay. Oh. Now these are two different series and nothing is repeated. Or you can do this or you can do this and do that. These are two different series. Or you can do this or you can do this and this but then subtract that. So whether you want to do it like that or whether you want to do it like the other one that we did originally or whether you can want to do, to do this you have to make sure that you understand what positive G, negative G, and all those things are. If it is not, a, if it is not the standard form, remember, the standard form is a template for you. Now if it moves back and forth, the only difference is that when you calculate the present worth, then you have to do another step to bring it to the right year. For example, for example if I have this case 0, 20 and from year 4 I have this to year 17 if I have that, then how would I find the present worth of this series? I'll move this to year 3 and then move it back to year 0. What if I find, what if I want to find the future worth at year 20. I'll move this to, to year 17 first 
and from year 17 I'll move it to 20. Okay. I got a question. So what if you're trying to do to year like 10 in between that? And you, would you have to break it up? You have what, what, what if you want to bring it to year 10? So she's picking up on the assignment. What if you want to bring it to year 10? What would you do? Break it up into two years. Don't break this. Don't break this. Bring it to year 3, and from year 3, bring it to year 10. Two steps. Thanks, bro. She's gonna tell you. <laughs> what did you do? Oh, so basically, you you do the you do the series, you bring it to the present. It's gonna be before that, which is year three. And then once you got, that's gonna be your yeah your present, and you bring it to year ten for your future. And then the same thing for the other side. You bring it to year seventeen, and then once you got seventeen, you bring it back to year ten, and then you add that together. Oh. What if I find, what if, what if some of you did this, took it to year three, and from year three you brought it to year ten? So you accomplished the answer. I said, what is the equivalent of this series as a single payment in year ten, at the end of year ten? Some others which are futuristic, they say, no, I don't like present, I like future. So you can take this and take it to the future and then bring it back to year 10. Which one of you will get a better answer? It should be the same, right? It's the same thing. Whether you do it like that or whether you're doing it like that, it should be the same. Because you are finding the equivalent of this series at this point. So which one would you rather do? Whatever you are comfortable with. Unless you are told. So, so let's do a couple of simple examples. Let's get uh, a couple of examples on our belt. Let's see how we can do that. Let's start with the simple one. Let's start with the simple one. Um, Hundred dollar here. Year one. Year ten. So. A100, and um, we usually write it like A1 or something like that, not to uh, confuse it with the, with the actual A value, equivalent A value. Um, and G equal um, 5. Let's find P. So in this case, A is going to be, again, two parts. One brings 100 to the present worth using what factor? P given A, 8% and 10 plus, plus, G value, and that is 5 times P given G, 8% and 10. And that converts that value to the present worth value. Good, 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 good. 
Let's do another one. Um, zero. One, ten, and two, and one hundred, and, and that. Same numbers, G5, that 100, I8%. What the present or future? What are we doing? Do the present. Okay. We will be doing the future too. But anyway, do the present. G and I are the same. A is the same in this case. Only the years are different. I'm going to look at this like that. Zero, one, that's, t that's two, this is two, this is three, this is four, and so on. I will count it like that. So what would this number be? Eight. Eight, okay. Eight. When I start counting from here, that's my zero, that's my one, because this is now the standard form. This is standard form. I'm going to do, I'm going to find a P1, which is equal to 100, based on these numbers. 100. P given A, 8%, and, and, and 8, plus G, which was 5, times P given G, 8%, and, and 8, that's the standard form. Okay. What would this value, where would this value show up? That value, this value, P1, is converting that value to this. So the actual present worth is going to be P1 times P1 times P given F 8% and 1.